welcome to the Boston Roll channel. If you want to support my daily Eternal Magic offerings while getting amazing perks like the Boston Roll Discord community, have me play your deck on the channel, or list inside where guides before tournaments, check out the Patreon or YouTube membership program. This channel is possible because of these amazing sponsors. Check them out, all their links are in the video description. As always, thanks for being here. Let's go play some magic. Welcome back to the Boston Roll channel. Today I'm playing Pioneer. Testing for the regional championship that has already happened by the time you're watching this. I've done a bunch of other decks so far, and now I'm back to Arclight Phoenix. This is the deck that I qualified with. It's the Pioneer deck that I have the most reps with. It's the one that was not touched by the most recent ban announcement among the top decks that were affected by the ban announcement. The thing that is slightly affecting my slam dunk option to play phoenix is the fact that high noon is a big part of the format right now that's the two minute enchantment from outlaws of thunder junction that players can only play one spell per turn obviously massive nightmare for the deck built on playing three spells in a turn that card appears in blue white control four color enigmatic incarnation control as well as being the linchpin of the boros tokens deck there is a lot of High Noon in the format, and it's because there's a lot of Phoenix in the format. But Phoenix remains one of the top decks in the format, despite the presence of High Noon, and lists have adapted to respect it. We've got Brazen Borrower, Spell Pierce, and Into the Flood Maw as answers to a High Noon. If your opponent waits till turn four to play High Noon, that might be too late. If they cast it earlier, we have two Spell Pierces now that can fend it off. Even if they do stick one, Generally, building up a situation where you can bounce it, untap, and have one turn where it's not noon to really do your thing might be enough to turn it back around for you. I want to try this because if it's still viable, then it is the one that I'm most comfortable with going into the this major event. And I generally believe in playing one of the best decks at a major event. Don't get too clever in a giant field. I know how to cantrip, I know how to sequence, I know my role in most matchups, and that's worth a lot to me. Let's get in here and try this Is It Phoenix deck in the new High Noon format. This video is partnered with Buffalo Chicken Dip Legacy, one of the hardest working grassroots tournament organizers in the Legacy community. Compete in their events for your chance to win dual lands and other Legacy staples, and get your name in one of the coveted slots on the BCDL trophy. Check out their upcoming events October 12th in Columbus, Ohio, and October 19th in Houston, Texas. Information is available in the links in the video description. Make your plans to attend today. I'm on the draw in round one. I think my hand is solid. I'm going to keep it. I have the Spell Pierce if they're a high noon deck. If they're not that, then Ledger Shredder can come in and cause problems. Inspiring Vantage. That's interesting. Drawing a Lightning Axe is nice. That gives me interaction to creatures and stuff, which is what my hand was missing before this point. And good thing I do, because Dreadhorde Arcane is pretty powerful. And sick. Drew, Spire Bluff Canal. So this is Boros Heroic. I can just put Ledger Shredder into play right now, or I could have Lightning Axe ready in the future. Ledger Shredder plus Lightning Axe next turn. I could Axe plus Spell Pierce. I could just Axe this now, put it in the graveyard, not think about it. And that dumps Arclight Phoenix. I think I'm just going to take care of this thing right now. Dump the Phoenix. I still have Spell Pierce up. I can Ledger Shredder plus Spell Pierce next turn. Oh yeah, we got him on the, the no play. Love that for me. I play Blue Side Pathway and Ledger Shredder. Get this in. Spell piercing, a removal spell here would be busted. Got the prankster ready to go. We're starting to get control here, or pull ahead. Ancestral Anger. Okay, they're pumping my creature just to draw a card. That's a deal. They found land number three. Consider and prankster. Okay, I'm going to free the Fey to start. Should not be that hard to trigger this Arclight Phoenix this turn. We've got... If I take Treasure Cruise, will I be able to cast it? One, two, three, four... Five, six, seven. Yeah, I think I could cast it exactly. Yeah, I'll take Treasure Cruise and then cast Consider, which also connives. Fiery Impulse might still be good. This Temporal Trespass 
is nice if I have to set up a combo turn, but I'm about to dump my whole graveyard. I think I'm going to get rid of the Trespass. And then consider seize some cards here. I'd love to just bin a Phoenix, obviously, is the nuts. Spell Pierce into the graveyard. Drew another Cruise. And I successfully counted to seven. Draw three cards, trigger Phoenix in for five. Drew another Phoenix. Now Ledger Shredder is a sicko next turn. This deck is so nice when it's doing its thing. They've got a red in the pool, Titan Strength, my Ledger Shredder in the end step. This is desperate. They are just, they lost a life to scry one. They kept it on top. Whatever they're looking for, they found. Can they combo kill me somehow? Clever Lumamancer. Okay, whenever you cast or copy a spell, this gets plus two, plus two. They didn't ram a bunch of haste onto it. That's good news. Okay. What's the best way to sequence this? My land is untapped. I can easily trigger a Ledger Shredder to get Phoenix into the graveyard. I think I'm going to start with Prof's Memory. Just draw a card first. This makes the whole squad more powerful. I draw a card. Another Phoenix. It's a little too many of those. The Fiery Impulse is interesting because it's only good for two right now, but I imagine they can save this no matter what the sequence is, so I'm going to Impulse this thing now. If they're going to save it, which also buffs it, I'd rather them use their spell on my turn than on their turn. Arclight Phoenix into the graveyard. This Lightning Axe is actually heckin' insane. Because that's my third spell. Or that's my second spell. If I spell Pierce, whatever their protection spell is, and then Axe dumping the other Phoenix, that makes it my third spell with two more Phoenixes to bring back. And I get to give one of these things plus two at the start of combat. Monstrous Rage. Plus two, plus zero, oh, put a monster on this. We've got three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. This is not lethal. I can spell pierce this first and see what they want to do about that. Because that taps them out and they lose a life. And then their creature dies. And if this was all just a trick to protect this creature, lightning axe now dumping the other phoenix. Oh, wait, I have the prof trigger as well. So 3, 6, 9, 10, 12, 12, 13, 14. They're actually dead if they have nothing here. And what they would need is a removal spell, graveyard hate, or the ability to give this flying. They need to both save this and give it flying. Okay, that's dead. That fizzles. Start of combat. I'm going to buff a phoenix and bring back the other two. Attack with my squad. Four exaxes. Okay, that was sick. Feels good. A Boros Heroic, bouncing a thing, sweeping a thing, all good. This deck does sideboard rest in peace, which is something to think about when you're pivoting. Temporal Trespass and Galvanic Iteration get boarded out a lot. I frequently don't mind cutting a Cruise or even a Phoenix if we expect high amounts of graveyard hate. I like my creature removal here. I like Prof's Memory. Crackling Drake is a great pivot. So I think Brotherhood's End is actually going to kill their creatures. I don't know if I have a lot of faith in damage-based removal in this matchup versus tempoing stuff out. Thing in the Ice seems insane here. Young Pyromancer is probably really good. Ral Crackling Wit is new to these lists. Uh, I have not played with this card at all in life. Plus, put a Blue Otter into play with Browess. I don't think that is for this matchup. I could cut another Cruise, I suppose. If they don't have the Graveyard Hate Cruise, it's really good. But if they do, it's really bad. It's deciding where I want to be in life on that. I think I'm going to cut Young Pyromancer and do this. Definitely have to dial in these plans before the RC. I can't be just guessing every round. But I'm in the get reacclimated phase at the moment. One of the things I love about Phoenix is you could pretty confidently keep a one lander, and that's what I'm going to do. Okay, opponent mold to six, and they have Leyline of Resonance. Okay. Exciting new card from Duskmorn. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell that targets only a single creature you control, copy that spell. You may choose new targets for that copy. Well, that just makes all their shit completely insane. Blue side pathway, pass with consider up. This being pathway instead of a real dual land means that these lightning axes are off the table until I find a red source. Oh, wow. What's going on over there? Did they mold a six and keep a one lander? on the strength of Leyline. Bin Ledger Shredder, found my second land. Happy with that. All of Storm Giants, and I'm just going to invest Shredder here. If they're over there missing land drops and shit, I'm going to cast this card. Generally, it's nice to 
get a connive immediately. Orange escape. Exile target artifact or, or no, I, I just assumed this was removal spell. Target artifact or creature gains hexproof and indestructible area. Yeah, they're just scrying one. Sure. Deal. Sent it to the bottom. This is two games in a row where they were targeting my stuff with their pump spells just to do anything. And I didn't kill a creature this time. I at least killed a creature last game. That would have been insane if they untapped with it. This is just the hand they kept. Okay, cool. I imagine their hand is full of powerful two drops that are worth keeping on the strength of. But it didn't work out. Okay. <laughs> on to the next one. This video is sponsored by Moxfield.com, the easiest way to build magic decks online. Moxfield supports over 30 formats, including legacy and everything else you'll see on this channel. There's multiple customizations so you can interact with your deck how you want. Views such as text, grid, or stacks, and groupings like type, subtype, color, color identity, even artist. The site offers light mode, dark mode, and so much more. However you want to see your deck, Moxfield can provide it for you. Follow my Moxfield to keep up with the channel and what I'm playing in paper. I'll see you there. On the draw in round number two, another one lander with a cantrip. I'm going to keep it. Lightning Axe can discard one of these phoenixes. A little more phoenix than I want in an opening hand, but the deck is built to move them around. Publish Mystic off Brushland. Okay. Is it weird that I don't know what this is? Elite Spellbinder. All right, well, I'll consider in response and hopefully just find a red land. Easy game. Well, they can't take the land, and I have 150 removal spells in my hand. They took Lightning Axe. That is the best card in my hand, for sure. I'm going to play Spire Bluff Canal and pass here. I think I'd rather free the Fae this turn, all else being equal. I can afford to take three damage to stock my graveyard for Treasure Cruise. All right, Fae, get free. Ooh, is there some counterspell? Even Interrupter. Okay, that makes sense. Sure. So that plots this. And now if I Fiery Impulse that thing, I could just cast that for free. That's kind of sick. All right, Fiery Impulse this jerk. And then free the Fey without paying his mana cost. Found Sleight of Hand. And Sleight of Hand. Fiery Impulse to my hand. That is two spells this turn. I can... It co still costs more to Lava Axe, Lightning Axe. I can Treasure Cruise right now. Seems pretty good to do against a green-white deck that's just kind of farting around. Okay, Island Treasure Cruise. Oh, no. I miscounted. I can't do that. <laughs> Shit. Remember last match when I joked about successfully counting to seven? Unsuccessful this time. My greatest enemy. Sure wish I had the Steam Vincent to play tapped or just fire killed their Spellbinder. Whoopsie doozies. It's fine. They've also taken a ton of damage off their own lands here. They cast white spell, double white spell, white spell off of these brush lands so far this game. Okay. Let's change the course of history here. This cost me three mana and a discard. That's fine. Kill elite spellbinder and discard Arclight Phoenix. Now I actually can treasure cruise. Reloaded here, ready to go nuts next turn. They played a land, which they haven't played in a while, so clearly that is what they drew this turn. Collected Company. Okay, this could get exciting. Anointed Peacekeeper, Kellen. Holy smokes. Okay. When Kellen attacks, reveal the top card of your library. If it's a creature or a card with mana value 3, let's put it in your hand. Otherwise, you may put it in your graveyard. Okay. Okay. Anointed Peacekeeper names Free the Fae. That only matters if Anointed Peacekeeper is in play. I could Flood Maw this, then Free the Fey, then Fiery, nope, Fire Impulse costs more. Ooh, this is, this is a fun little puzzle to solve. I think if I even just get an Arclight Phoenix into play, it's fine. Okay. Uh, cast this without the gift. Bounce Peacekeeper. And then I could Free the Fey. Consider Treasure Crew's Temporal Trespass. I think I'm trying to consider here. I already have a treasure cruise. Consider Prof's memory. That card's pretty good. I don't think it's what I'm looking for here, though. Untapped red source. Still can't cast this card. I've cast Flood Maw. Consider. If I only cast two spells this turn, that doesn't seem right. But where did they go? By Flood Maw, 
and free the Fae. Okay, okay. I remember now. All right, jeez. It's over here. Yikes. Got to get my brain right before the RC. Okay, now I have a blocker. And I'm just going to put this into play in blocking mode. We're not trying to race. Control Phoenix is a gear that this deck has. And it is frequently a role in matchups. Skyclave Apparition clears the homie. That's fine. This is six damage. We're not a room. Safe to say. Branch Loft Pathway to the Graveyard from Kellen. And Thalia. Wow, Thalia is really good. Sleight of Hand. Okay. Fire Impulse costs four right now. That's not a good deal. I could play multiple 1-3s for my hand. Treasure Cruise still costs two mana. I don't have eight things to exile with it. If I kill Skyclave Apparition, I get a 4-4. Four, four. If I shock in Steam Vents, I can put a 1-3 creature into play and represent Fiery Impulse. That blocks here, kills this, blocks this. I'm at two. Yeah, I think I'm just a little short in every direction to make a game out of this. This was cool, the way it all rolled out. And <laughs> it took me time walking myself to get to this point. If I just played my land correctly on that one turn, it's fine. I think I'm going to sleight of hand because I need to find something to get me out of this. It's neither of these things, but the untapped mana does matter. Now I can treasure cruise. Cruise right through that Thalia. And into a bunch of shit that doesn't help. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I just miscounted one turn and ate shit for it. All right, Brotherhood's End comes in, Thing in the Ice, Young Pyromancer, Spell Pierce doesn't seem that important, like Collective Company is obviously a powerful card, but whatever. Blood Maul looks good. Rosemary Command doesn't seem like it kills a lot of stuff out of them. Generally into Crackling Drake in all post-board games. Raisin Borrower is another interactive spell that can affect the board. Do I cut a sleight of hand here? I don't think that's the worst thing I can do. Okay, let's try this. Bunch more creatures in. Oh no, I love one landers, hate zero landers. Let's go. Okay, keeping this and stoked about it. I think I want to bottom Phoenix, actually. It's Phoenix or a land, and without cantrips in my hand, I'm going to put the Phoenix away. Basic Island Pass. Unsummoned, surprisingly potent. Elvish Mystic. I'm going to save my Unsummon and get my thing in the ice in. The one of thing from the sideboard. Anointed Peacekeeper, okay. It's probably just names opt or some shit. Named into the Flood Mall, okay. That slows down my interaction, but keeps my cantrips intact. Opt. Just find some spells to cast. Not that. Bottom Steam Vents. Treasure Cruise, not currently helpful. Spire Bluff Canal gives away what I drew for the turn, but it's still the correct time to play it. Four mana. Just collect a company again. Is there some other four drop in this deck? I'm just going to block. I don't think this deck has pump spells. Another Peacekeeper. You can name Drake here, or they can name Floodmaw again. Named Drake on that one. But Raisin B, that's really good. Okay, red side pathway. And I'm going to pass. I can knock the dominoes down this turn. Yeah, I'm going to block one of these, let the other one through. But I can bounce the one on Flood Maw, then Flood Maw the one on Drake, and then go to my turn. Collected Company functions as a counterspell here, knowing that they have that bird in the deck. Getting an ally. Okay, so this can make a homie or Anthem the Squad. It's making a homie. All right. Is this when I want to make my move? I can also just like spend three mana on Flood Maw right now to bounce the one on Crackling Drake. Let's put that away. That lets me play Drake this turn, or if I draw a spell, I can think in the ice. But I've never drawn a spell in my life, so it's not that. Crackling Drake's on the stack. Got a handful of spells now. Yeah, this is tight. Depends on if they have like a Skyclave Apparition or a Collected Company, really. Peacekeeper's back. Probably names Petty Theft. Yep. Yeah. Temple Garden. They zapped it in. And tapping out main phase. Okay. The Skyclave Apparition, really good here. Gideon's in creature mode. This is seven. Yeah, I'll block the thing that dies and take the rest of the damage. Yeah, that's disappointing. Fire Impulse, really good draw, though. Is there anything I'd want to do in the main phase? Yeah, the Brotherhood's end. Consider a dump of Phoenix. Consider again. 
Prankster. Could just get a Phoenix into play here. All right, I'll put Prankster on top. I'm going to free the Fey. Get back Lightning Axe. Move to combat. I get the Phoenix. And pass the turn. I don't really want to get counterspelled here. I'm just going to Fiery Impulse. Am I going to do that? No, I'm going to pass. If you have the counterspell bird, you got me. Voice of Resurgence. Well, it's now or never. I think I'm going to kill a three power thing. I'm not really concerned about this Skyclave Apparition getting in the zone. Voice of Resurgence is a sicko. I love playing with this card. It's a shame it's not really playable anywhere, but I love it. Kudos to my opponent for having it. Gideon has attacked once, which means it can emblem without dying. They still don't have good attacks, though, if they do that. And plus, and Gideon's pretty good. I'll just jump with Phoenix. That one card in hand, there are potent things it could be. I think they would have used the Counter Bird or Cocoed over the top of the Fiery Impulse, though, if they had it. Gideon is creature mode. I will simply block with my Phoenix. I do have this giant Air Force right now. I'm going to start with Treasure Cruise. Draw three new cards. Consider Prankster, Phoenix, the Axe can dump the Phoenix, Free the Fey is always messed up. I'm going to leave red up. I still have a blue land in my hand. Ooh, Brotherhood's End. That is really good. It kills all their shit. I'll take that and deal three to all creatures and Planeswalkers. They do end up with a 1-1 one -one off of Voice of Resurgence. All right, cool. Nice. That one was fun. Gideon is a card in their deck. Another 4-drop for my Spell Pierces that are currently on the sideboard. And I could bring in Negate to be more solid against that sort of thing. I'm just not sure this is how I actually win or lose these games on the back of their 4-drop resolving. Because I lost game 1 to their 4-drop when I time-walked myself, and then I beat their 4-drop game 2. That was in play for like 3 or 4 turns. And the counter spells are really bad if they have Voice of Resurgence in their deck, which we know they do. The Rail Emblem is so sick. I just don't think that's what this matchup's about. Yeah, I'm just gonna submit my deck again. Red cards in the opening hand, keep. Razor Verge Thicket, Cast, Kellen, Adventure Mode, that makes a map. Okay. There's a lot of words on that that just says make a map, ultimately. I'm gonna play Spire Bluff Canal rather than Tap Sea Events. I have Opt or Impulse, either of which I will cast this turn. Kellen arrives as a 2 3. Guess I'm opting. Rankster, how many of these do I want? I already have one. I'm going to bottom that. Kind of hitting my land drops is a bit of a priority now. Ottawara could be really good later. I'll take the damage on Steve Vents and drop his Ledger Shredder. Just having stats on the board is nice. It's a flying creature that might be bigger than their creatures. They mapped Brushland into the hand. When Kellen attacks, they put Elvish Mystic into their hand. Block. Rest in peace. Okay. I did board out some of the stuff that cares about that. Not as much as I'd like. Ottawire has to be a land now. And yeah, this just got pretty awkward. Fiery Impulse is not going to work in the way that I'd like. It can kill that Elvish Mystic in their hand, though. I'm just going to pass. I know I could cast a spell here and get two survey or connives. Oh, I can also finish off Kellen after combat. That works too. Block. End step. Fiery impulse. And they're clearly showing collected company here, but I'm still going to cast the spell that I have. Archon of Amiria is fucked. Opponent came to game. I'm going to free the Fey here. I'm looking for Lightning Axe into the Flood Maw. And that's a card that works too. Okay. Archon of Amaria, big problem. We know two of their six cards in hand right now. I'll block Skyclave Apparition. We're going to respond to this by bouncing the Archon so they can't name Flood Maw. They probably name Fiery Impulse here. Though I could see them being worried about Crackling Drake if I draw a land. They could play the Mystic, but then I get to connive. Sick. All right. Conniving. All right, one of these phoenixes is gone. Casting phoenix is fine, but I don't like the spot that it's in right now. Coming out multiple dorks. And now we know two cards in the hand. Archon of America and Branchloft Patchway. Currently have the ability to cast two spells. Or I could just play phoenix. I think I'm just going to play phoenix. 
That's here now. Do I attack? No. I'd rather trade. Oh, this is a lot of mana. What am I dying to? Some Planeswalker? Okay. Uh, this buffs a creature every turn, and I eventually lose. Oh, it can copy things too. What did this just do? Look at the top seven cards of your library. You may put a permanent card of mana value three or less from them onto the battlefield with a shield counter on it. Okay, that's what they just did. I am going to block here. I'll cash this out for my 2-2. And there's the Archon. They know I have Fiery Impulse. I'm going to attack Elspeth with this. I can finish off whatever creature they block. I'm just going to Impulse this thing now. Play the Hall. I'm finding Brotherhood's End still kind of does it here. But they can put a plus one counter on something this turn. Yeah, that's uh, that's going to be enough. Just having a 4-4 four four will finish me off. Give it a lifelink counter. Already has Vigilance. Just comes built in. Consider. Found Opt. Actually going to get rid of that because the Cantrip engine is not online right now. I can play the Drake, but then I just die. All right, cool. Um, I could play Prankster to block. Is that enough? Eat the four, three, four, five. All right, fine. I have to play Prankster. I will continue playing the game, even though I'm pretty sure I'm dead. Okay, now I am actually dead. Cool. All right, so I, I punted game one in a spot that ended up coming down to one turn to stability or not, and we could see how this deck might be hard targeting what I'm doing, and it still didn't even feel that bad. All right, yeah. I mean, cool deck. I have not seen this before. On to the next round. The Bosch and Roll channel is proudly partnered with the Resleevables. Hmm. Good. All right, here we go, gang. In this YouTube series, hosts Cedric Phillips and Patrick Sullivan take us on a set-by-set -set journey through the good, the bad, and the ugly of Magic's history. Each episode is a focused deep dive into the facts about a set's design and release. The magic lore expressed through the cards in that set Tournament Edition gameplay videos featuring products and Pro Tour decks of the era. An award show that shouts out the best and weirdest cards of the set. And a final grade for the set's overall success. Whether you want a history lesson or a nostalgia hit, The Resleevables has it at youtube.com slash The Resleevables. On the draw for round three, handful of interaction and a free the fay. Let's do it. Spars HQ. I'm going to play. Stormcarve Coast and pass. I can't guarantee free the Fey if I hold up Spell Pierce this turn. And I'm just going to hope they don't cast High Noon. Cool. Okay, passing the turn, I have Spell Pierce plus removal spell up, or I could free the Fey in the end step. Uh oh. Well, that's bad news. This matchup sucks. Free the Fey, please hit three Phoenixes. Hit zero Phoenixes. I'm going to grab Spell Pierce, even though I would rather have Consider. Land? Shit. All right, well, opt right now. Land? Ugh, Phoenix. If I take it, I can go to discard. All right, I will take it. I miss my land drop here. And they've seen one spell pierce. But they don't know I have two. They might not care at all. Okay, it's becoming my turn. But still love a land. A prankster. I think I'm just going to go to cleanup and dump a Fiery Impulse, or dump a Lightning Axe. No, Fiery Impulse is worse than Axe. Alright, get rid of that. Axe could kill something like Leer, which Fiery Impulse can't. I can free the Fey in the end step, which will at least lock Treasure Cruise, if nothing else. The only hit is Prankster, milled. I, memory, two Shredders. Still haven't seen another land since the start of the game. Treasure Cruise will certainly result in me going to discard, but that's fine. I'm cruising. Found a land. Undefeated. I am just going to go to discard here and dump Phoenix and Fiery Impulse. Weird game. Oh, they're casting uh, a tutor in the end step. This is going to put a, another Lotus Field into play. Fourth Espion Stage with represents Lotus Field. Discard Phoenix and Fiery Impulse. So that face-up spell pierce has... Bought me a lot of time here, but now they have eight mana showing. It's going to be a lot harder to play through that. Nine mana showing. 
Cycling Vizier. I can't counter that. Not a spell. Hidden Strings. Spell Pierce. I'm going to Spell Pierce this twice. And then probably die next turn. Okay, all I can really do here is free the Fey and hope that it hits access to multiple Phoenixes. Consider, we're still live. Consider, please show me a one-mana spell. Not Hall of the Storm Giants. Treasure Cruise, we did it. And by we did it, I mean I drew a bunch of cards, I'm going to attack them for six and then die. Okay, in for six. Wish this happened four turns ago, but was busy not hitting land drops. Matchup's horrible, doesn't matter. Or over the pages, off we go. They got the strings, and I cannot beat this. Okay. To the sideboard, I board out all of the cards that were in my opening hand that game. Impulses and axes come out. We've got Ashiok, Dispute, Negate, Stroke. These are all cards I want here. Reason Borrower is a threat I can flash in. They do sometimes pivot onto spooky creatures like Dromoka in the sideboard. I'm looking at a list right now. They've got Zakama. Yeah, Zakama seems to be the one in. In lists, Sphinx of the Final Word. Yeah, it's just random big idiots are in the sideboard that is part of their pivot. Don't always have time to do a lot of cruising here. Maybe this Brazen Borrower is not where I want to be. Just looking at the map. Okay. I need to inflict more damage than I did that game. Let's go. A classic one lander hand. Not afraid of it. I get if one of the top three cards in my deck is a land, we're fine. And if it's not, it wasn't meant to be. Sleight of hand. Always had it. I will take Island and leave Ottawa in the deck. As far as HQ, this format needs Blood Moon. Has anyone ever said that? Just putting that out there for the world. I got a super easy discard to my first Shredder, if I can tread. I think I'm going to free the Fey here. Let's go. Fairies opt. They found exactly what they needed to. Steam Vents opt. Doing this all now. I'm going to loot away this Phoenix. Can't play it this turn, but at least it's in the bank. Island, I will keep that on top. Attack for two, and then hope I don't die this turn. Mana Confluence. That is notably not a Lotus Field. They can main phase tutor for one. Oh, Casting Vizier. That's fun. I can't imagine that's plan A, but it is still powerful. I'm going to free the Fey again. We hit Spell Pierce and Galvanic Iteration. I'm going to put Spell Pierce in the bank and then just attack for two. Okay, land number four, still not a, a field. They know about Spell Pierce. They don't know about Disdainful Stroke. All right, can't be countered. Trample Haste, Delirium. Return this from your graveyard to the battlefield with a finality counter on it. I'm going to Petty Theft that. Now we know what they're doing over there. If I can manipulate this Temporal Trespass into a place where it's helpful. Oh, cool. That kills that stupid thing. I can play two Pranksters this turn, which gives me a Knife. It does tap me out, though, if they suddenly pivot onto Comboing, which is not hard with a Vizier in play. Into the Flood Maw is not going to help with that. I'm going to dump the Spell Pierce. They know about it. It's not going to win me the game. I just want power in play, so when I take multiple turns in a row, I can win. All right, don't kill me. You can play your stupid 5-5 again. I'll, I'll allow it. Impulse. All right, they're digging for the actual win here. They found the field. How in trouble am I? Untap the field. We know they're holding the the attack dingus. All right, we're probably dead. Disappointing. If they pass, I'm in great shape. If they don't pass, obviously it's because they've won the game. They do only have one field in play. All right, sweet. Okay, nice. I feel like we got away with one there. Okay, we've seen their big uncounterable Delirium Snake. I already had some Lightning Axes in. I had one Brazen Borrower in. Blood Moss still in. I thought about the other Borrower the first time. That might be even better now. And there's a bit of a level system of, is Spell Pierce even good? If they're going to play around it, and they've seen it both games, then it's not good. But obviously it is my cheapest piece of interaction, and I'm on the draw here. I'm going to go off one spell beers. Get a little rowdy. Ooh, this is wonky. I'm going to keep it, though. 
if I'm willing to keep a one lander on the strength of sleight of hand, then I'm willing to keep a five lander on the strength of sleight of hand. Those are different things, but I am just uh, excited to be here playing Magic the Gathering. I have this beautiful Foglio art sleight of hand in my hand. Mystical Dispute, I like that card quite a lot. Okay, <laughs> which of these two lands do I want? I'll take a pathway. That sucked. That was actually pretty brutal. I've got Razor Verge Thicket. I've got Spire Bluff Canal. And pass. My hand is disruptive if their spells are blue. Uh, I'm not going to counter that, though. This Hidden Strings is also blue. Pour Over the Pages is blue. I'm not going to fight over this impulse. Okay. It's passed with three mana. None of it is Lotus Field deck. I'm going to lose my mind. Okay. Steam Vents tapped. I could have played Island here, I guess, to hardcast Mystical Dispute if they do something that's not blue. Like end step, play this Archmage Tutor. <laughs> yeah, great. Good job, me. Getting the kinks out before the RC. Identifying the correct play seconds after I've made the wrong one. Welcome to my channel. And Thespian Stage. They are just here to party. And play this big worm snake. Couldn't be countered anyway. Trample haste, dead in three turns. Come on. Okay. I mean, I did keep a five lander, but since then I have looked at what seven, eight cards, and they've all been lands that were mystical dispute. Yeah, we're just gonna die to this thing. They're not even gonna cast another spell. Okay, they're copying Lotus Field, Sylvan Scrying, grabbing another stage, sleight of hand, oh my god. Playing the game. Lightning axe, please. I'll take Brazen Borrower. A borrower, you're in. Welcome to the big leagues. I have to bounce the Worm Snake in combat. That's where I can actually save damage here. A petty theft this. There's the Thespian stage. Roughly 7 trillion mana available to them. How sick would it be to Mystical Dispute an Emergent Ultimatum, though? There's Dromoka. Can't fuck with him. Prof's Identic Memory. Okay. Can we draw a spell that helps? Treasure groups normally so good. All right, I'm going to play Pathway. I'm going to cast Brazen Borrower, who can at least block Dromoka. And uh, Dromoka means they can also just combo off because it's also a Grand Abolisher. Yeah, this was a disaster. They are going to end the game with all 20 of their starting life total still available. It's reasonable to say I should have mulliganed, uh, but also ran insanely bad even after the keep I kept. I'll block what I can block. And then die. Ledger Shredder. I can exactly play Ledger Shredder plus Treasure Cruise and then die. Cool. All right. GG. Bad matchup. Uh, this is one of the decks that gets farmed by the High Noons in the format. Uh, the last decision I'm making right now for the RC is whether I want to be a High Noon deck or just try to play through them. And I really don't like losing the Lotus Field. Maybe I'll just play High Noon at the RC. We have some more matches to come. We're a few rounds into the video. Thanks for sticking with me. Friendly reminder that if you're still here and having fun, smash that subscribe button. And if you want to play what I'm playing, you can use my affiliate link for TCG Player to support the channel while you shop for cards, and you can try any deck anytime with a cardhoarder.com loan account for Magic Online. All these links are in the video description below. Now back to the league. I'm on the play with four of a kind in round four. Uh, gonna mulligan this. This hand's great, though. I'm gonna keep this and bottom... I think Lightning Axe. I mean, Brazen Borrower's interaction, that's also a threat. Lightning Axe costs a card to use. Could be punished massively, depending on what this matchup actually ends up being, but I have no way to know that now. Fire Impulse, Ledger Shredder. Shredder's a great turn two play. I don't have a second land right now. All right, I will take the Shredder. That is the second red removal spell that I've declined. Let's see if I get punished for that decision. Castle Lockthwain tapped. All right. Is this the mono black waste knot deck? Does any other deck play that card? I'm gonna consider first in case I hit an untapped land. Temporal trespass, you're out of here. Cool. River glide pathway rewarded. And I could consider again, but I'm gonna wait till their turn to do it when I have more information about their deck and how this is gonna happen. I can even just wait till my turn and shredder plus consider all at once, get the extra point. I don't think they're gonna take consider with Thoughtseize. I think they're gonna take Ledger Shredder. They took memory, okay. That means they have removal spells available. 
with that read, I will consider in the end step. Spiral of Canal, don't need you. Prankster, what's up? I like you a lot. Prankster plus Opt. I can, of course, play Shredder and trigger it with Opt right now, but I would be conniving away one of these high impact fairy cards or nothing. Or just like the card I draw, you have to discard something. One is on one land, though. That's really weird. All right, I'm going to play Ledger Shredder. What's up with people keeping one landers in? Non Phoenix decks. I don't think I agree with that shit. Reckless. Okay, they found a land. It'll push to the surprise of no one. That's fine. Now opt in the end step. Another opt. I'll keep it around. Gonna draw a land. No. All right. I'm gonna free the Fey. We'll start there. Found a treasure cruise. That's the money I was looking for. Treasure cruise. I did end up finding a land. But I cannot get another card into my... I can't get the Phoenix into my graveyard this turn. I could consider and hit a Phoenix. I'll try that. Go for the high roll. Easy, easy. Play to your, play to your hits, folks. It was a three-outer, but whatever percentage of the time that represents the, like, six or seven percent of the time, you're going to get a Phoenix. And now I have a Phoenix. Rewarded. I could have just not played a spell. Bank Buster, you're dead. A little late to start trying to bust the bank. I'm just going hardcast Phoenix attack mode. I think representing Opt is worth two life here. They have done zero damage to me. They're at nine. If I could just keep the velocity going, feel good. They would need some sort of exile based sweeper right now to really turn this around. Is there even one of those for two or three mana in the format? Main phase bank bust, probably concede. Ooh, Urborg. All right. Maybe they're still playing the game. Duress. Well, I'll cast the non-creature spell in my hand. Boo. Boo. Well, I'm going to bottom that. I'm not just going to let them discard it. Ha! Card advantage. All I had to do was delete a treasure cruise from my life. Cool. All right. There's some black deck. Mono black discard doesn't usually play Reckon or Bank Buster. I guess it could, though. There's no reason it couldn't. Like, Maze Mind Tome is a card that deck plays, and maybe someone is just like, no, I'm busting banks. I'm smart. I don't know. Okay. This looks like a great matchup for Ral Crackling with, though. Young Pyromancer. I don't think I'm trying to trespass temporarily. I don't know what creatures they would even have. Naturally, it could be proven wrong, and it's a deck full of creatures, and they just had a weird draw. I have no idea. But... Those cards didn't look good with what I saw that game. Shave a cruise in case they, they're on go blank. Bring in a lot of threats. They could afford to cut a Phoenix too, if there's another card I'd rather have in. There's Mario Command, Brazen Borrower. I'll rock with my Phoenixes until they talk me out of it. Let's go. Yeah, I'm in. If I get thoughts eased and lose my sleight of hand, this is going to get pretty awkward, but the ability to keep seven a lot is one of the things that makes Phoenix really good. A consider. I'm just going to slight here. Oh, shit. I wish I had considered. Well, I'll put one of the Phoenixes in my hand. That's just RG. I think it's right to sleight of hand there because that's something I can do now where consider uh, can be used with other tricks like in response to a discard spell or, or something like that later. Uh, I'm going to pass with negate up. If they do something like cast go blank this turn, this is something I can interact with. Do I want to counter bank buster? I think I do. I'm not really ready to fight that thing. Unlike last game where they cast it on turn four and couldn't even activate it, this thing is uh, setting up to be in a spot where it'll be really good. Ooh, the prankster and the cruise in the same pile. How far am I from cruise? One, two, three, four, five. I'll take the prankster. And I'm passing. I can free the Fey in the end step. If I end up getting gone blank this turn, I can quickly rebuild that. They hard cast Layla into the Void. I'll just cast my spell in response. Arts Fiend of the Dross. Okay, uh, that's a 6-6. Six, six. I'm going to free the Fey in response. Wow, just milled four lands. Full brick city. Someone do the math. Frank Carson, where are you? Okay. Um, whenever a creature an opponent controls dies its controller loses two life. So jumping with Phoenix would cost me two life. I think I'm going to play Picklock Prankster. And my plan is to Lightning Axe this thing after combat. 
but it has one damage on it already. Ooh, no attack. Did they read the play? Nope, they're back in the red zone. Okay. Okay, they decided to fatal push. That's fair. Do I consider in response? Does that do anything? I could hit spell pierce, but that doesn't actually counter the spell. All right, that's dead. I lose eight life this turn. That's a lot of life. They did identify the play, though. Opponent is on some level of understanding what might happen in the format. There are no basic mountains in my deck if they go for this field of ruin. Oh god, a card I have to read. Unholy Annex is being cast. At the beginning of your end step, draw a card. If an opponent, if you control a demon, each opponent loses two life and you gain two life. Otherwise, you lose two life. Okay, so they do have a demon. Spell Pierce does play here. Consider. I'll keep the consider. Just fire another one. Opt. All right, yeah. We'll just keep the card selection coming. And then for five mana, when you unlock this door, make a 6-6 six, six demon. Okay. So they get to draw a card and I get drained for two because they have a demon. Crackling Drake is big. I can opt first, so that doesn't change anything. Oh. All right, I can kill their demon and put a phoenix into play. I'm just going to do that. Lava Glide Pathway. Axe, discard a card. Axe, discard a card. Trigger Phoenix. Get back to work. They do have two cards in their hand. If it's another giant demon, could be a problem. They can also just pay five to make a giant demon. This card is cool. Or they could cast that one. Yeah, that one's good. Oh, Mutavault's also a demon. They had it the whole time. Mono Black Demons. This is a Pioneer deck. I'm really excited right now. Yeah, I'm just going to die to this Unholy Annex for sure. Ledger Shredder. Oh, yeah, there is there's no chance here. Okay, that was sweet. Okay, Disdainful Stroke and Brazen Bar were definitely coming in. This is not Mono Black Discard. It's Mono Black Demons. I still like Negate. Into the Flood Maw is good. Lightning Axe. Does not line up against six sixes, famously. I do struggle with basic, basic arithmetic from time to time, but I do know that six is a larger number than five. I do like the negate. I do think the spell pierce is good. I didn't see any graveyard hate that game. They just sort of beat me with their cards. Maybe I will just cut another lightning axe. I could cut a prof's memory. That is a way to make my creatures big enough to beat a demon, but not if their deck is just mono removal. Do I want Thing in the Ice here? That could remove a board full of demons. No? Okay. I'm going to go like this. All right. Uh, this hand is fine. I'll keep. I'm going to play the Steam Vents tap to start. And then hope that my Prankster doesn't get Thoughtseize. But I have memory. Otherwise, I have, I have a good two drop either way. Bonus on six. We are getting Thoughtseized. I expect we'll lose Prankster here. Prankster deleted. All curves into Spire Bluff Canal. That all works out great. Hides the information as well as actually just developing my game. Cool. Field of Ruin. Duress. Three choices here. Sleight of Hand is the most imminent. Treasure Cruise is the biggest problem later. Took the Sleight of Hand. Okay, so they are playing the short game. If they have something like Unlicensed Hearse, that's going to be a great decision. Mute of Alt's in. The first demon has arrived. Here is the Unholy Annex. I'm going to Petty Theft that before we get into the end step and they get a card off it. They knew that was there, but it's fine. River Glide Pathway. They don't know about this Ottawara. I don't think I'm going to use that, though. Now they can play the Annex and activate Mutavolt. Thoughtseize. Well, that sucks. Okay, Thoughtseize works. Goodbye, Treasure Cruise. That is the game that they set up. I am applying pressure, though. They will, if they replay the demon room, they'll lose two life in the end step. Is that how this card works? Yeah, okay. They draw a card, lose two life in the end step. I play Brazen Borrower right now. I would love the ability to draw some cards and make Brazen Borrower bigger. Just treasure Cruise off the top. Opt. All right, let's get the party going. Bottom Spire Bluff Canal. Disdainful Stroke. I'm not mad about that. Borrower is four power. In you go. I think I like the Ottawara and I like the Disdainful Stroke. I like Ottawara more as Ottawara than I do as a, an island. Because they could go land, make a demon here. Field of Ruin. Okay. I was not really close to using that. And that fuels my graveyard, so deal. I could even channel Ottawara right now, but I kind of want them to lose two life. Fatal Push. Disappointing. 
Well, can't do anything about that. And now they can activate Mute of All, go to their end step, drain me. But they've seen the Lightning Axe. Okay, just going to lose two life. They're at eight. All right, deck. We got to tempo them out from here. Ledger Shredder. I like that card quite a lot. I can counter a spell or kill Mute of Vault this turn. Can't do two things. Children's Edict. Okay, my creature is gone. If they activate Mute of Vault, I'm killing that shit. Bankbuster. Can't interact with that. They go to six here. Opt. Okay, I will opt for the Digging for Pressure. All of Storm Giants. That's in. That's a game ending threat eventually. Castle Locked Wayne. They can just unlock the door here. Ooh, go blank. That hurts. Do I think Ottawara or Disdainful Stroke is actually the better card for me? And I think it's Ottawara. Okay, discard Stroke and Axe. They can activate Mute Vault now. Oh, it's starting to turn. Now the, the Demon Room is back. They gain the life. Consider. This costs six to activate. I'm not there yet. Consider Lightning Axe. Yeah, I'll, I'll keep that. It's not pretty, but it works. Blood Letter of Aklazots. If an opponent would lose life during your turn, they lose twice that much life instead. Okay, so there is like some Splinter Twin shit going on here. It's also a demon. I can axe it, but then I lose Ottawara. I could just bounce this Unholy Annex, and then the engine's off, but then what's my plan? Yeah, I'm going to bounce the Annex. Uh, this is falling apart. I have come up short. That go blank was clutch. One, two, three, four, five, six. This is enough to activate the hall, which they don't have to block. They'd be at one if they don't. They can't fatal push it this turn. This bank buster is just sitting over here as a four, four as well. Gotta watch out for that. So two, six, seven, eight, double it. Uh, just try not to take nine next turn. And it's really close. Okay, I'm going to play River Glide Pathway. And I have six mana Lightning Axe available. I don't like just sitting back here. I feel like being aggressive is probably right. But I also don't think I'm winning that game. There is some stupid demon spell that's like a player loses half their life or something. And that's the, the combo here. Well, they drew Field of Ruin. Yikes. All right. This game's unwinnable. Okay. Float. Island. And I'll let them get into combat, then I'll kill this thing. Now I'm hellbent. Uh, treasure cruise into a threat with flying in haste would somehow do this. Like if I could treasure cruise into consider a way of Phoenix, then in the memory wouldn't trigger that turn. It because the Phoenix wouldn't be in play yet. This is so cool. Treasure cruise fixes everything. Opt. Let's start. Start there. Steam vents to the bottom. Sleight of hand, keep it going. Ral Crackling Wit, okay, okay. If there's one idiot who can turn this game around on his own, I'm ready to crackle. Big ol' otter, 2-2 two, two prowess otter, okay. Suddenly a game. Whenever I cast a non-creature spell, put a loyalty counter on this. Minus 10 is draw three, get an emblem, your spells have storm. I can also draw three, discard two with the, with what I currently, oh god. <laughs> okay okay and mono black uh big mid-range chungus deck uh clearly would have children in it but also like you didn't have it till now i'm just saying and children can crew bank buster kill ral you see the line all right i'm good we don't have to keep doing this what a cool deck what a cool card unholy annex just soloed me there on to the final round on the draw for the final round lands and spells let's go a blooming marsh River Glide Pathway. This is great because it represents Spell Pierce or Opt or Consider. I get to leave up Interaction and Cantrip if they don't do anything. The Nuts. Who are we playing in Grease Fang? Is that? Do people still do that? Oh god, what is this? Overlord of Bailmerk. Impending 5. Uh, impending is you can cast this for its impending cost. It enters with 5 type counters and isn't a creature until the last is removed. At the beginning of your end step, remove a time counter from it. When it enters or attacks mill four, then you may return a non-avatar creature card or planes order from your graveyard to your hand. Okay, this is spooky, and it cannot be spell pierced because it's a creature, even if it's being cast at, in enchantment mode. Okay, Rafine's informant. This is definitely Grease Fang. 
We've got a Rafine's informant. And I'm going to consider. I don't. You know what? I actually will take the Steam Vents because Stormcarve Coast doesn't come in untapped. And I would like to play Ledger Shredder. They're not going to Grease Fang this turn because they can't get a thing in the graveyard. Grease Fang costs three. Holding up Lightning Axe to deal with that in the future will be something I need to do. Here's the Informant. It connives. Discarded Parhelion. And they didn't have a land drop. Okay. This thing will eventually be a 5-5. I can Lightning Axe that then. I'm just going to play Stormcrow Coast and pass. Brazen Borrower plus Opt lets me connive mid-combat. I can Spell Pierce something. I can Axe a Grease Fang. They are attacking. I'm going to start with Opt and see where this goes. Sleight of Hand. I'll keep that on top. And then I could bounce the Overlord. Then they can replay it, but I mean, that's fine. Right, bounce Overlord, Connive. Probably supposed to block before I do all this. Now, if they just Fatal Push, I don't. I still take all the damage. I don't need a second Spell Pierce here. Not even sure if I need the first one. Yeah, definitely should have blocked first here, though. Bitter Triumph. Yep, blew it. Okay, this is three damage I didn't need to take. Another Lightning Axe. Sleight of Hand. Flood Maw, Fiery Impulse. I like Fiery Impulse. I'm going to play this Hall of Storm Giants and pass. Multiple answers to Grease Fang ready. Beginning of combat. I'm going to roast this Rafine's Informant. Just can't be taking these beats. Another one. Discarded a third Parhelion. They are locked and loaded on that thing. Temporal Trespass, maybe someday. Steam Vents enters, tapped, and pass. And their hand is seven spells. They haven't played a land in four turns now, and they've looted several times. I'm not going to kill this thing now, kind of running low on cards. I'm willing to discard the Lightning Axe for anything short of a game-ending threat. Cash Grab. Mill 4, put a permanent card from among the milled cards this way into your hand. If you control a squirrel or return a squirrel to your hand this way, you create a food. Okay. Mostly just mill 4. And there is a Rafine's Informant there. Or one of the lands. And they did go for the land. I guess I'm supposed to spell pierce that. But if they've been setting up a Thoughtseize, yeah, played around it perfectly. <laughs> Definitely did all of that completely on purpose. End step, Brazen Borrower. Now we're on the offensive. Temporal Trespass. Looking like a game plan for the first time in the entire league. Not just yet. Fire Impulse is nice. That lets me kill a Grease Fang without losing a card. They're going to combat. I will Fiery Impulse this. I have nothing if not Red Burn spells in my hand. I'm going to make them come to me. We're not going to play this Nickel and Dime game where they're ahead. That's fine. I just need a heckin' Treasure Cruise. Overlord's back. Essica's Chariot. Three of them. What do you get? A uh, non-avatar creature or planeswalker from your graveyard. Okay, so they bought back Rafine's Informant. That doesn't have to be from among the milled cards. Not a treasure cruise. It is land number six to cast Lightning Axe. And I'm almost at Hall of Storm Giants, which if I ever activate, I lose because then I'm tapped out when they respang me next turn. I can beat a Thoughtseize here because I have two of them. Okay, they have fully pivoted. I'm running out of options. I think I have to kill one of these. I just can't really afford for them to be crewing their thing. Can I have a treasure cruise? This might be a treasure cruise. All right, Prankster, free the Fae. Let's go. Hit treasure cruise. There's a Phoenix in there too. Let's play the game now. Load me up. Multiple Phoenixes. Okay, I can use my last lightning axe on this cat token. That seems insanely reckless. I have played two spells this turn. I'm going to at least consider here. I will keep Ledger Shredder. And then I get a Phoenix. Begin pushing damage. Have we applied enough pressure that they commit a Grease Fang to the board yet? Fiend's Informant. Still not interested. This does crew the Chariot. I could just axe the Chariot. Is Temporal Trespass enough to win the game? Starting next turn. Okay. Land number five has appeared. They could slam the Grease Fang. Beginning of combat. Do I care about this? I could kill it. That does clear the way for Grease Fang, which deals a bunch of damage to me. It doesn't kill me necessarily. Right, I'm going to kill the Chariot and discard a Phoenix. 
Overlord ticks down. Prankster, you're really good. Okay, so if I go Shredder, Trespass, Loot the Phoenix, Trespass, first appearance of this, if this connives into a one mana spell, we are cooking. If it doesn't, I'll just take an extra turn and figure out what that looks like. All right, we're not cooking. I am playing Hall of Storm Giants and attacking for three. Then I get an extra turn where I can start picking prank blocks. Get to see a lot of cards here. Come on, deck. Ledger Shredder. I'm gonna hold on to you. Free the Fey. Oh wait, are they just dead? Hold on, hold on, hold on. What's the best way to actually kill them here? There's five here. If I activate a hall, that is their life total. That gets blown out by a removal spell. If I think I have, they have one of those, I can cast this spell for sure, which is likely to find another spell, but might not find two spells. If I whiff on the prankster, that's really bad. Do I think they will have sandbagged a removal spell this long? I'm going to go with the hall. All right, hope that I read this correctly. It's just a big risk. If that Ledger Shredder was opt, I would go for the spells, but it's not. Uh oh, they're tapping mana. Grizzly Salvage, does this do anything? Put a creature or land card into your hand. Okay, yeah, that doesn't do anything. Sweet. All right, found the line. Temporal Trespass finally delivered. Okay, versus Grease Fang. I do use their graveyard a bit. Uh,. Unlicensed Hearse is a better graveyard interaction spell than Ashiok is, but Ashiok's no slouch either. Brazen Borrower, just anything that interacts with the card Grease Fang. Prismari Command destroys an artifact. Brotherhood's End kills a bunch of shitters. They have stuff like Graveyard Trespasser in their deck and their own Unlicensed Hearse. They can pivot pretty effectively. I don't think I want Spell Pierce here. They can Thought Seize me or whatever, like Silence and then go off, but... That's not really the axis I'm trying to fight the game on anymore. I think I like this setup. Let's get after it. I like my hand. Even if they thought seize or duress me, it's like you can take the lightning axe and leave me all this card selection. You could take the sleight of hand, but then I still have shredder. You can take my threat, but then I still have an answer to your combo and my own card selection. Just kind of cover in the bases. Fiery impulse, obviously great. Sleight of hand. Floodmaw, Ottawara. I'll take Floodmaw. It's basically Ottawara, except I don't need a land, and this costs one instead of four. Fiend's Informant is here. Dumped an Essica's Chariot. I'm going to play this Island and pass the turn. I'd like to play Ledger Shredder, but I don't want to get hit with Essica's Chariot. Three in the pool, or three available. I'm just going to take damage here. And I'm going to Fiery Impulse this in the end step. Now that the coast is clear, knock that out. Ledger Shredder, invest that in success. Kutzel's Flanker. When it enters, put a plus one counter on this for each creature that left the battlefield under your control. Arel, exile the graveyard. Arel, gain two life, scry two. That's fine. All right. Flank your face off. Scry two, gain two. I could interact with that thing, but again, they're a combo deck. Not putting my shields down that easy. And I'm not that worried about taking three random damage. I will start dealing that back pretty quickly. Unlicensed hearse. That card's a little annoying. I could flood maw the hearse. I'm not going to, though. Not yet. Okay, Ledger Shredder number two. Shock in Steam Vents. And attack for one. The hearse is going to slow me down quite a bit here, but if they double spell thinking it's fine to let me connive. Then I can bounce the hearse before the connive happens. Here comes cash grab. It's Shieldred. Okay, they, they got Shieldred. That is a card that I can defeat with Lightning Axe. Okay, they're going to attack first. If they play Shieldred, my plan is to bounce the unlicensed hearse in the end step and then kill Shieldred with the Lightning Axe, which connives twice. Uh, that will do a bunch to me. Okay, what order do I want to do this in? I have to. I have to bounce the hearse. I have to just take my medicine on the shouldered, take a bunch of damage. I could also just lightning axe shouldered, ignore unlicensed hearse. I don't think that's what I want to do though. Oh, I have to give them a fish to do this. Right, right, non creature. First time that's come up. All right, I will gift you a fish to bounce your unlicensed hearse. Enjoy that fish. Okay, fish achieved. 
I will lose a bunch of life to Shouldred, but I will see a bunch of cards and do a bunch of stuff. Let's see if I can convert on this. Discard Lightning Axe, because Fire Impulse is better with no cards in my hand. Sleight of Hand. All right, discard Fiery Impulse. I am going to try to Sleight of Hand my way out of this. I'm at five. Sleight of Hand, find Treasure Cruise. Off we go. Sleight of Hand, Sleight of Hand. Guaranteed I can I have this turn. Brazen Borrower. I like that. Sleight of Hand. Well, I like Treasure Cruise more. Brazen Borrower discarded. Arclight Phoenix discarded. Let's go. Opt into my hand. Treasure Cruise. For Xaxes with these two phoenixes. I am left here without an answer to a Grease Fang. In the bottom of that looking for I was looking for the fiery impulse there. There is not a Parhelion in the graveyard. It's just an Essica's chariot. Yeah, I think I leave my three fives back, get a little taste with the three twos, and then try to go big next turn. We know they're holding Rafine's Informant. Do I play out this land? Because if they double spell next turn, I'm going to connive. I am not going to play this land. Okay, the board's under control. There's not a Parhelion on the graveyard. There is a Rafine's Informant in their hand. Those are the turns you play Phoenix for, even if we end up losing that game. That was awesome. Just register Ancestral Recall in a tournament. Okay, here's Grease Fang. They get to bring back Essex's Chariot, which I can block effectively through that thing, get some cats, attack, make another cat, just double block here. Okay, I need to come up with just a few more damage here. One Phoenix is enough. Okay, Prankster, free the Fae. I'm going to free the Fae. Don't Lightning Axe. I could Axe discarding Steam Vents, Connive, Connive. I'd also opt first. I'm going to Axe the Grease Fang, discarding Steam Vents. Get some connives. Discard and opt because I'm trying to tr cruise this turn. Discard and consider is better than opt. Discard, opt. Axe that. Treasure cruise. Draw a bunch of cards. Spire Bluff Canal. 4, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Yeah, I'm one short. This deals two to anything. But I can't play it now. I'm going to play Red Side Pathway, even though that doesn't cast any spells that I have. And I'm just going to pass. I'm showing Lightning Axe or Removal Spell or a, a Shock, Fire Impulse. I'm selling a bluff here. Consider will not change this turn one way or the other, but them thinking I have a Removal Spell might. But they're also super dead, so they basically just have to play into whatever I have for them. And they scooped it. Nice. Okay. Just a little combat math at the end. Phoenix is not an aggro deck. A 2-3 and three record, not super exciting for my RC prospects, but one league doesn't mean much. I made a few sequencing errors and just counting to seven errors throughout. And the deck's still great. We didn't play against High Noon at all. I did experience the joy of casting Treasure Cruise and flipping behind a game that I was losing. Uh, like that last one, I was pretty far behind and then just can't trip into, can't trip into Treasure Cruise and then you're suddenly winning. There's not much to say about this deck that hasn't been said already in the past three years or whatever since it's been a top deck in Pioneer. It's certainly on my short list. I will continue exploring, and by the time this video is live, you will have known what I came up with. This has been Is It Phoenix. Everyone, thanks for watching. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe. Check out the Patreon. I'll see you next time.